I'm starting to realize that wearing these heels was maybe not the best idea today. So if I fall on my face, please excuse me and laugh it off. <laughs> you know, I had been talking to a, a client of mine in December of 2015 about an upcoming conference that she was supposed to attend. I've been looking at like various options and researching and there was one particular piece that I thought was so perfect for her. I walked into her home just a few hours before she was supposed to leave for Delhi and I set out all the options. Even though there was time constraint, I was so sure of this piece that I love for her. But like all stylists do, uh, I had my alternatives in place for my just-in-case scenario. But as it turned out, and as I know her, the client that I'm talking about, um, she happened to love the same piece that I picked for her, and actually she rejected everything else. It was this classic, beautiful silk woven sari by this designer called Devar Dill. It was modern, it was contemporary, and most importantly, it just felt so her. So we tried it on. And to my horror, four hours before she was supposed to leave, the blouse didn't fit at all. And then she was panicking. And she looked at me and she was like, what are we going to do? Like she was angry. So I kind of took my breath, sat down, and thought to myself, what am I going to do? And then I had this epiphany, literally like in five seconds. So I was like, just give me 10 minutes and I'm going to be back. I ran back to my house, which was thankfully like a few streets down from ours, looking for a piece that I had bought um, in Paris on one of my travels. It was this, I'm going to show you, it was this classic vintage Christian Lacroix jacket, like from the 60s or the 70s. And um, it was impeccably finished and it was like, it was like a corset jacket, so it fit like really well. Um, and actually it goes, I think, best with like tailored pants or a tailored skirt. But I don't know why, I had this feeling that I'm going to mix it up with the sari and see what happens. So I went back to her house and when she saw the jacket, she was like, what is this? Like, I mean, this is your solution. Uh, but I was like, you know what, just try it. And she did. And we had a win. Oh. <laughs> the is she was going for the HT leadership conference. I mean, even today, um, when, you know, when we look back and we see like all the reviews that I got, she was like, five times Karina made us major, like major ethnic goals and 12 ways to wear a sari and like, it was insane. Like, I had never got a reaction like that as a stylist. So crisis was averted. You know, she was so happy, her face was glowing. Um, and I think that was the most important thing for me. Sometimes, you know, when things like this happen, critical acclaim, it makes you grateful, but it also makes you highly reflective. I think sometimes the approach that I had that day that made me deliver in that moment. I had this amazing opportunity to work with Karina Kapoor Khan, but it had an issue and it had a time constraint as well. So, I question myself, why did I have that issue? Why did I suddenly get that epiphany? Where did that conviction come from to stand by what I felt? And ma didn't matching like a vintage old jacket to a sari sound like completely off? I think the truth is that a bubble burst that day. Sometimes when you're put in like a pressured situation, you know, you have no option but to think outside the box and think in a non-linear way. So zooming out, I asked myself, who is Karina Kapoor? You know, what does she stand for? Why does an entire generation of women admire and look up to her like that? I had to create something for her that felt very true to her aesthetic, but it also felt true to my aesthetic. I had to make sure that she looks good in every angle, I had to make sure 
that what she wore not just represented her as an actress, but also as an important influencer at a leadership conference. I have known and worked with Karina for about 12 years now. And I think year after year, our growing friendship has really evolved, you know, and enhanced actually our um, creative collaboration. Understanding her existing sense of style through the lens of who she is really helped me make, like, make that style evolve and mature. I think it is this consistency in our relationship as stylists and news that has kept me in my peak state of continuous learning. The look that day that I did with her, I think it completely blurred boundaries. It was the old and the new, the western and the traditional, the masculine and the feminine. And I think she is someone who, I mean, we should all agree, is like a representation of the unconventional with everything that she's done in her life and she's still doing today. You know, after, year after year, I think after that, I think everything changed and we've been able to achieve so many such looks over the years that I'm so proud of. You know, it reminds me of the time that um, when I realized that I wanted to be a stylist and there were so many young girls around me, I was in college, um, that were like, oh, styling is like being glamorous and playing dress up. I was 17 at Parsons School of Design in New York City when I realized actually styling is much more than that. What is styling? Styling, I think, is a distinct creation of a look, you know, what you call an ensemble. It's about putting beautiful pieces together to communicate or create a story about a person and their environment. There are so many things that are important when you style someone. The fit is about the garment construction and the finish. The color you choose to wear must complement your skin tone. The textures are super important too. So like ruffles and ruching will kind of make you look full. Um, textures, I mean, you know, another texture that I can talk about is um, like spandex or bandage. It will accentuate your curves. Uh, patterns are important too. Remember always, vertical stripes will always give you length and horizontal will always give you breadth. So I mean, I can go on and on about the do's and don'ts, uh, but I have to tell you one very important thing actually, accessories. And this doesn't just go for the women, it can make or break your look. It also goes for the boys. Accessories is not just jewelry, it's um, the shoes that you choose to wear the belt that you have, the bag that you choose to carry. So it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things besides your clothes. So if I go on and on about the styling do's and don'ts, and we'll be sitting here all day and I'll be, everyone will be like 18 minutes. <laughs> but, um, so I'm not going to tell you that. But I think if you are someone who is trying to discover your own style, uh, these are the three questions that you must ask yourself. You know, what does this look saying about you? and how appropriate is it to the time and place, and most importantly, which we do, never ask ourselves, how do I feel wearing this, you know? I think um, since my college and even today, styling has been such a therapeutic journey for me. I, I mean, I'm actually helping people communicate who they are with, you know, what they wear. Um, so, what I'm going to do today is play a little game with you. I'm going to ask all of you, how many of you are worried about wearing the same thing twice? Okay. Lots of lots of hands. Lots of hands. Which is good. But the ones that the ones that are not the one I think it's mostly the women. Yeah. <laughs> I think the men are like, we'll just repeat, it's fine. <laughs> Um, but I think um, if you've not raised your hands, which I'm sure there are a bunch of people, I'm sure this thought has at least crossed your mind because we're all slightly guilty of this and I think frankly the clothing industry works on this damn guilt. <laughs> so I'm here actually today to break this myth and tell you that it is okay. When you buy something, it is your responsibility to make the most use of it. And we call this maximum functionality. 
And to prove the theory of maximum functionality, what I'm going to do for you today is tell you six pieces. I'm going to show you six pieces and tell you how these six pieces can be worn, like these six pieces can be worn in six different ways. Six pieces, six looks. Look number one. Leather pants worn with a nice polo neck top and an oversized white shirt with a pair of black pumps. Nice, I mean it's chic, it's cool. You can wear it like to a lunch. Think it's a classic. Look two is kind of an inverse wear of, way of wearing a shirt, you know. You wear um, a white shirt, you kind of add a little black crop top to it and keep the same pair of pants on with the same black pumps. Look three, we get rid of the pants and add a skirt instead and wear the white shirt off the shoulder, kind of making it a little bit like easy grunge vibes. Look five, I mean sorry, look four, <laughs> is um, you add a little uh, tweed jacket, you open up the shirt and you've got like a little bit of a layered look, you know, like a fall winter look. You can wear it, you can wear it with stockings and boots, uh, so it kind of makes it like fun. Look five, you wear the, the tweed jacket now as a dress and you close it and it's got this little for the fashionistas here i'm sure you've already recognized it's a little bit of a, of a chanel inspired look <laughs> and look six <laughs> so i thought i think i thought like may as well i mean instead of showing you i want to show you physically what you can do with it i've done the little polo neck um top the bra same brown pants and the tweed jacket, especially because I had a lot of people tell me like, are you not cold? So I bought the jacket for all the people who were telling me, am I not cold? <laughs> um, why is this important? You know, Barclays did a study where they realized that one in every 10 shoppers actually buy stuff online to just wear it once on social media. Because once you wear it on social media, you can't wear it again, right? Wrong. You know, I've come here today to tell you that it is not about emptying your pockets. It's about making the most use of what you own. And I think as fashion and any consumer-centric industry is rapidly going towards sustainability, I think this is more important than ever. Uh, when you buy clothes, you have to think about versatility, functionality, and comfort. It was through my travels and my master classes and meeting, you know, various, uh, you know, people through the years of me styling that I realized actually as a stylist, I had a much bigger role to play. There was a clear lack of understanding of putting looks together, a lack of understanding of like, who are the new, talented and affordable designers so the average shopper didn't really have access to that. So to fill this gap, uh, my, my, my best friend turned business partner, Ashi Dua and I started a company called Greenham Weddings in 2015. Um, what this company does is it, it helps you, uh, you know, it helps people to meet these new, talented, super affordable, you know, young designers that are doing amazing work. And what sets it apart is that actually me as a stylist and my team are there at this strong show to help you and assist you to make the right shopping decisions. Now the company is in its fifth year uh, and with all the learnings and experiences I've had, um, I've actually come to the conclusion that working with a model that was more curated helped uh, you know, someone who walked into my show have a more wholesome experience. So you, you don't have to, you know, be bogged down by like hundreds and hundreds of designers and thousands of options. I'm sure, you know, sometimes when you go to a mall, you're like so confused, you know. So I had that edited for them. And most importantly, I, I gave them the option of assisted shopping. And moving forward, 
I want to break the norm of making a show bigger and bigger and bigger. And as opposed to that, I actually want to enhance uh, the experience of the consumer by keeping it even more curated. We're currently uh, working on building um, a digital platform. You know, I've realized that that as my work evolves, it, it kind of evolves in line with my personal growth. So I'm going to tell you something today. Facing true reflection, it's not always been easy, and it isn't <coughs> easy for anyone. And this is the first time I'm going to share this on a public platform. Um, but when I was 17 at Parsons, my parents could actually only afford the first year tuition. And um, it was, Parsons is like in the top 10 design schools in the world. It's super hard to get into. And I went and I did my first year. And after my first year, I would have to take a $100,000 loan as a 17 year old girl. Uh, and I, that scared me shitless. Like, I was like, oh my god, how am I going to do this? You know, how am I going to start my life on such a big loan and so much debt? I had this, um, however, I had this feeling that styling, you know, had a lot of opportunity in India and it was at a very nascent stage and I felt like I could make it big. So, I dropped out from Parsons at the age of. 18 and I came back to India and my parents were not happy. They felt like the money that they had invested in me, I mean, had gone to waste and they were really upset. So I think that was my, the night that I came back, it was my realization of time when I realized that I had to um, prove so much to myself. There was so much to prove and to my parents to a large extent. I mean, it was, it was a tough time <laughs> as a 17 year old girl. But even though I came back, my learning was not going to stop because my passion was about communicating who somebody is through their style. My learning became about thinking in terms of processes as opposed to outcomes. I was decoding not just people, but the movies I watched, the songs I listened to, the art I was experiencing, the travels I did. I had to balance my internal and my external consistency and balance my exposure and my experience. And I've realized creation actually comes from the word creativity. We all have this right brain creative side. We just have to activate it. So that day with Karina, it activated in conflict. I have gone from creating looks to creating a platform and hoping that one day I get to create a space and even my own brand because constant creation is my only way of being the most me that I can be. Thank you.